Hey everybody, it's BC here, and welcome to another episode of Planet Nomads. Uh, if you're wondering why I'm in a pod, it's because it's got something to do with our new update. This is an interesting spawn. Uh, but yes, we are now in version 0 0.8.4, and one of the things about the update... Oh yeah, that's right, that's my uh, crash ship. Is uh, they added, uh, added gifts for the Christmas gifts, but it's only available in new survival games. And they're saying that there's supposed to be a box, which is right here which is supposed to be like high-end tools and rare materials. So let's see what they give us. And that wasn't it. That was actually a crash pad. Oh, there was supposed to be a, a box for the whole Christmas thing. Let's see if we can find it here. That's not it. Maybe I had a bad spawn. No, there was supposed to be some sort of box and they were saying that if you recorded it that you'd be able to be entered in for uh, a planet nomads actual survival box oh and here come the bees well, i don't see where it is it's going to water maybe it's under here get away from those bees no well, i don't see it maybe i had bad luck because i ended up on the water like uh, edge of the water edge of the mountain I don't see any of those bees still following me. No, they aren't. No, there was supposed to be some Christmas gifts. I'm gonna do another load here on a different, another save file, or start another survival game and see if it actually loads. So I'll be right back. Okay, I'm in another another survival world here. And let's just look around. It actually says specifically, sp speaking of presents, if you start a new survival game, boxes with rare materials will, will rare materials and high-end equipment will await you on the planet. So we might actually have to look for them. That's probably why they're saying, "Oh well, you gotta if you can find them and record you finding them, then you can be entered." But anyways, that was that. There's a few more things to this update. Let's see, let's see if we can find the other box. I wonder if they show up with a beacon. They do not. Yeah, I have no idea. So, yeah, I guess they're like directs. you got to hunt them down and find them somewhere, wherever they may be. Which seems kind of odd, unless that's something they're always doing. I don't know if it's just a Christmas thing. But anyways, let's, let's head back to the lab. And here we are. And I am definitely getting some lag, so I'm going to shut this thing off. Uh, I'm going to rework it eventually. Uh, there's a couple of little things I want to do because one of them's a sort of retesting a previous experiment. Uh, trying to get something a little better. Where's that main switch box? Maybe this one here, I guess. Yes, good. And those are shut off. All right, and then another th uh, another thing I want to try to do is see about getting uh, a better loading system for the tank because I actually wanna I want to build a better tank, make it longer, a little more, a little better design, and definitely a diff better angle to view it from when you're firing. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a couple of quick experiments set up here. Actually, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to show you the new things we have. Because apparently we have long conveyors now. There they are. Four, four section and eight section conveyors. So let me get out of here quickly. Let's try to run. It's so laggy. That build vision does not help. Okay. So let's, uh, let's actually compare them right here. So there's uh, eight fo the four foot the four section. I don't know if these are actually technically feet or what kind of measurement they have. So there's the four four unit length, and there's the eight unit length, which makes it handy. Would have been nice if they kept the textures all on the same side, unless that gives it more of a a little more of a uniform pattern. At least you don't get those ridges in there, in there anymore. But let's go ahead and try a few things here. So I'm going to...
get the first one set up and I'll bring you back when we're gonna test it. Alright, so here's the first thing first thing I wanted to do. Uh, I was talking before about not having enough kinetic energy, in other words that the, the balls that I made were hollow so they weren't transferring the weight. These are the heaviest blocks in the game at an astounding, what was it, 16,000? Uh, where is it here? Where's that beacon? 10,000. So it's the heaviest block in the game, whereas the balls I was trying to use were probably not even close to that. So I've got a winch set up. I actually have the winch turned on and I have it switched off here so I can just turn it on and then release it. And we'll see what happens. So this is hooked up to the first one. Alright, and yes, I did them in Christmas colors just because. Definitely broke the cable. And it looks like it might have worked a little bit better. I was trying to get the spacing on them. They do have a 5x5 five five hitbox, but because of this, I might have to rotate them to get them to work a little better because they should really shouldn't have a gap. So, uh, let me actually try this again. Alright, well... Uh, it didn't quite work out like I thought. I was originally thinking of putting uh, five by five pl blocks up there, so they sort of nudge a little bit better. But this one is leaving a bit of a gap, so maybe I'll put the blocks around the top there, do it like a little five by five pad, so at least it's got something to butt up to, and hopefully the weight will carry it. Okay, let's give this one more shot here. See what happens. Yeah, just doesn't want to work that way. That was worth a shot. Anyways, now for the loading mechanism. I'm going to go do it over here. So I'm going to throw, throw together a gun quickly. And then we'll see about the, this loading mechanism. And I have an idea where I'm using the, the hover mode on a hover pad to actually push it in. Oh, I hate that. But anyways, okay, here it is. It took me a minute to remember how I had the uh, the guiding system. And uh, if you haven't seen this before, I'm using the hover pads to actually push the rails through the barrel. Um, put the build vision on so you can see. I'm just using directional. It's kind of hard to see, but they're all going in the same direction, including these two. This is sort of my staging area at the moment. And what I do is I uh, assemble the rail in here, and I'll show you how. I do that. Uh, there's a slight drawback with do with this setup, and that's actually why I'm trying to find a better loading loading sequence. So let's go ahead and put a block here, uh, and then put the the short inner wall. I've tried using conveyors. This is where the problem lies: is it wants to snap those wheels behind me. So that makes it difficult. Once you get the first one in, then you should be able to this one on and I think yeah I gotta get rid of that block so we gotta put on here first and then we gotta go on here and as you can see it wants to side snap that wheel which I don't want that's what I want and then when I go in I gotta do have to make sure that it's close enough to those wheels so that when these hover pads push it through that it doesn't bind up or go out the top of the thing. Uh, it's, like I said, it's not the best idea in the world. <laughs> I'm still trying to find a way to auto load this thing. Oh, there it is. Alright. So then once I get it built, then I just take the block out and then it's free. And this is what takes makes it so hard, especially with uh, the snapping, is trying to build this rail. So I want to try to find a better way of actually uh, pushing in there a little bit better so you can see now the hover mode on the pads is kicking in so all I do is just hit forward and it shoots it out so what I want to try to do not fly up to space that's what I want to try not to do is I want to have it set up so when I take out the take out that one block there's a hover pad that just happens to be on hover mode that automatically pushes it into the barrel to load it up so I'm going to uh, do a little bit of tinkering here, a little bit of building, and I'll bring you back when i got something that somewhat works. Okay, 
That was an absolute pain to try to get that thing in there. I thought about taking that top wheel off, but if I do that, sometimes it doesn't work out right. So the only thing I got, thing I got left to do is we'll set this to hover mode. And I'm going to have to do some of my, <laughs> my steam pop-ups. So that is automatically set to hover, so that should push this in theory. And it does not. Probably because it's not heavy enough. Well, let's, let's clear the barrel. If I can get in here. And it's jammed. Oh, already went. I didn't even see that. Alright, so. What else am I going to do here? Because I've been trying to figure this one out for a while. And the problem is, is I don't want to make the loading area too big. Just because that's going to be overhanging the back end of the barrel. I thought about having a, a third set of wheels, but that doesn't really work out too well. Hmm. Let me ponder this for a moment. Okay, let's try that again. I put a, another roller bearing here to see if that keeps it down, so hopefully that this pushes it. And it sort of does. It sort of does. I'm wondering. wonder if it's going to work better if that's one block lower. I know it has a two block area of effect, but it might be a little more at the top. Let's find out. Okay, I have it one block lower. Let's see what this does. It's not bad, actually. That's actually really good. A little aggressive, but I like it. Yeah, the problem is, though, is now we have a misloaded barrel, so I don't know what's going to happen here. That yeah, still works. It's weird how it slides like it's hitting an invisible wall. Still got to find an easier way to easier and faster way to actually put this thing together because as you will see in a moment so maybe I can actually do it better in third person but that's the problem you tend to have but I find if you get close enough and on the right angle I can just get it my head's in the way to do this one this one is always a tricky one that's why if I can join these two together outside and then load them in afterwards. Oh, I just saw it. And go around and then eventually you get the hitbox. Sometimes you gotta crouch. Uh, but this is all got to do with eventually setting up an auto loader for this so I can have a magazine of like 20 rounds. I don't have to worry about anything except to hit a few buttons or turn a couple of switches on or off. Oh, and it was just there. Come on. It'll come. Eventually. Or I'll bring you back. Okay, I'm back. I finally got it in there. I actually forgot to hit the record button. It's the second time I record this skit, so... Well, not skit, segment, whatever. But anyways, uh, so what I did is I changed it up a little bit. I took the, took the hover mode off, so it's not actually going to load up into the barrel until I get to the cockpit. So, let's go up inside. I feel like I'm repeating myself, and I am. And so it automatically loads, and then we fire, and that should actually get us a really good speed. Um, I am going to have to figure, think about this one, trying to get it to work a little bit better. Uh, it seems to be okay without that missing, so maybe a drop load system might work. I will just have to make sure that they actually drop into the tube. Uh, I've tried conveyors, and they don't seem to work as well, but... There's always room for experimentation, but I'm definitely going to be working on a new tank uh, probably next episode. i got some time to come off here, so I might get a big tank and get some more toys around here in the lab.
I actually forgot to change that. I changed that in my last recording, but I'm just showing you episode 102. Is that a monument up there, or is that a plant? Probably a plant. But anyways, I'm going to call the episode here. Uh, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave me a like, and I'll see you next time in the lab. Later.